So the Valor Cat Challenge is a five-day CAD challenge for students interested in elevating their CAD skills and strengthening their problem-solving skills in a unique hands-on competition. The challenge began on July 15th and ended on July 19th at midnight. Participants competing solo or in teams two to three were tasked to design an FTC robot to compete in a fictional FTC game, Supershot. Alongside the robot, teams were required to submit a press release about their robot. This is a portfolio that entails their strategy, design process, and any mechanisms they had on their robot. Through the ValorCAD challenge, we wanted to allow for newer participants at first to gain a rapid problem solving and design process of a competition season, while challenging more experienced participants to elevate their designs in a short period of time. Gabe, why don't you tell us about the rules in the rule book of Supershot? So this year's game Supershot is played on a normal FTC field, uh, 12 foot by 12 foot foam tiled field with one foot tall walls. So to score points this year, robots must collect frisbees and score them into the low goal and high goal, claim beacons, and hang at the end of the match. Teams are rewarded more points from scoring frisbees from halfway across the field. So in autonomous, teams are awarded 15 points for moving outside of their starting zone. Each claimed beacon is 30 points um, and 5 points for frisbee scored in the low goal and 15 points for every frisbee scored in the high goal. In teleop, red and blue frisbees are spread out across the field randomly, and each frisbee in the low goal is a point, and each frisbee scored in the high goal from the close side is 5 points and 10 points from the far side. In endgame, teams are rewarded 15 points for every beacon and 20 points for latching to the high goal and 80 points for hanging on the high goal. Multiple teams are allowed to hang on the rung, allowing for more creative designs that can support two robots on the rung. Something to note um, about this field is that in the middle of the field, we'll go through all the teams to give feedback before we get into the top 10. Uh, so we're gonna do 14, pause for a little bit, and then we'll do the remaining 10. Now, the first team on the list is team 49 from FTC team 15077, All Saints Patriots. Gabe, why don't you start us off? So this robot was designed by Anthony, and this robot was a very simple robot, but it played the game effectively. So there's a hang on the back um, with a really tough gear ratio that was designed for two robots, but one of the issues that we realized was that we didn't really see how another robot could get onto this robot. Um, it's got a shooter to shoot from halfway across the field, and we did realize an issue with the intake that there may be some issues with getting the frisbees from the intake into the shooter but other than that it was a really clean robot um one more thing that it was missing was a beacon presser and we the judges saw this as a really big thing in the game that a lot of teams ended up forgetting a beacon presser but we saw it as a pretty crucial part of the game so yeah right. i also really oh. Go ahead. I really like the color scheme, but I thought the intake system, maybe instead of you powering using a servo, you could have used a motor. But other than that, I really like the, the hang mechanism. It was really robust, and it would probably work a thousand times. Sweet. So we're going to move on to the next team. Uh, in 13th place, we had Team 27 from FRC 6800. Alex. All right. So we had 27, 13th place. Excuse me. Um, that was all done by Alex. Looks like it was one person from our host team, Valor. I really liked all of the individual aspects of this robot. Used some really, really big wheels on the drivetrain, which I always am a fan of. And a 2 plus 4 configuration. So two tractions and a 2 plus whatever. Four, yeah, I said that right the first time. <laughs> um, which I don't see a lot of in FTC, and I really enjoyed seeing. I liked the intake. was very nice. And I felt like the shooter had a really good chance of being practical enough to work and to get some refinement in real life. Also used a lot of rev extrusion, which made the lift really compact, which I was a big fan of. All right, moving on to our 11th place team. We had team number 16 from FRC team 3184 Blaze Robotics. So what I liked about this robot is these wheels look like there's a chance they could get over the middle if they hit it with some speed. There are big wheels to be able to grip onto that bar and get over. Also, another neat thing was their hanging latch. It looked like it was going to grab on pretty secure and hold tight. One thing that you guys had uh, been mentioning in chat is these submissions are really high quality. It only gets better. They have... Um... 
the press releases that they released with each of these, which was a pretty cool addition um, into this whole challenge. A lot of the time you just release some some CAD and just throw it up on the screen. But the fact that these had some press releases that were pretty well done was uh, very cool to see. So we were pretty happy with it. Yeah. All right, moving on to our 21st team was team 36 from FTC team 14189 Vision. Gabe, why don't you talk about that one? Um, so this robot was designed by another Alex, um, Alexander, and this robot was another uh, fairly simple robot, but it looked like it was able to play the game well. One thing that I did like about it is that there's a bar going around the entire robot, which makes it easy for them to hit the beacon so they can just drive into the beacon and they'll hit it every time. Um, with this robot, we do have the bigger wheels, so it's easier to get across the barrier. Earlier I said that a lot of teams forgot about that barrier, but this team seemed to take care of it with those larger wheels. Um, and as far as their Frisbee mechanism goes, um, there's some questions about how the intake manages to get to the shooter. But other than that, it was a solidly designed robot. Thanks, Gabe. All right, moving on to our 19th place team. I know you guys had also talked about this in chat a little bit. We are going in random order until our top 10. So in 19th place, we had team 37, which was team 50 or FTC team 4347 Nano Gurus. Yeah, so we had a submission by the Nano Gurus uh, by Ria and Ritvik. I probably butchered that, but that's all right. So I really liked the drive trade on this robot, even though it looks Pretty counterintuitive. I love seeing teams go for smaller wheels and a faster ratio as opposed to kind of what everybody, the bog standard, 4-inch wheels and 19.2s. Um, I liked the intake being a roller. It seemed really unique. And, yeah, it looked like it had a pretty good shot of winning. It's all very simple, which is very nice. And I enjoyed another Rev Extrusion Hang, which is really darn simple. All right, thank you very much. Now moving on to our 20th place team is Team 13 from FTC 8468, the Javangers. Javangers? I also probably butchered that. It's not, we should have practiced these names beforehand. <laughs> um, go ahead, Carter, and tell us about that. So with this robot, it looks like they decided to keep the drive base simple with some wheels and motors mounted directly there. But that's not to say it wouldn't be effective. This looks like it would end up holding together pretty well. Another thing they went with here is having a scissors lift to lift the Frisbees up with a wheel there for shooting them. So they'd be able to adjust that height based on how far away they are. So that seems like a pretty good idea there. And looking at that intake, it looks like it pivots up to deposit them into the shooter. But there may be Maybe may, may need a little bit more grip on those wheels in the front to reach the Frisbees. All right. Thank you very much. Now to the 15th ranked team is Team 53 uh, from FTC 10696, uh, the Cyborgs. Gabe? So this robot was designed by Pierce, Rowan, and Ethan. And among the judges, this was one of our favorite robots with the amount of Go Builder that they used. And it lines <laughs> up perfectly with all the giveaways, with all the half channeling and all that. Um, uh, with the judges, we called this the Go Builder tank with all the stuff it's got on it. Um, this robot has everything on it. But one of the big problems that we saw with it was that it was a tank and it was maybe unnecessarily heavy. Um, but it's got all the game elements there. It's got a beacon presser. Um, with those big six inch mechanum wheels that can go over the barrier, um, it's going to be hard for it to get pushed around, even though it's got mechanum wheels with all that weight. Um, it's got its shooter design and an intake, and overall, it was a really good robot design. Yeah, the train on top was just really wild. <laughs> go ahead, Evan. Yeah, uh, I was about, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I love the beefy robot. That's uh, on Valor. We tend to build beefy robots, so there's a special place in my heart for that one. <laughs> All right, on the 17th place team, we had team number four from FTC team 14189 Vision. So team number four, we had. Let me pull up my names here. Sorry about that. We had. Oh man, 
Camille from Team One Four One Nine Eight Nine, and another nice, simple robot that looks like it has a really darn good shot of working in real life. I love the H Drive. Um, it's always nice to see people breaking out of the norm with drivetrains, and this one seems really well executed. Um, other, all in all, it reminds me a lot of my uh, Relic Recovery robot, so that's a big plus in my book. <laughs> and it all looks very solid. I'm a big fan. Very excited to see these one-person teams. I know it's pretty difficult in a short amount of time to get all this CAD done, but this is the third one-person team we have seen up to this point. I know there's a couple more down on the list. So kudos, kudos to you guys who were uh, who were one manning it for that entire uh, entire stretch of competition. All right, in twenty second place we have team number six from FTC team eight six two seven Shambots two point oh. So here's another great example of a team with only one member, and they actually said this was their first time catting. So especially congrats to them for coming up with such a solid robot here. These. Side plates are look like they have their numbers cut in, so that's looking nice on that wood material. One thing that could be different with the drive base is to add a little bit more support to those drive shafts on the underneath there, but it seems like a way that the robot would be able to move around the field in all directions fairly well. Also, it looks like on their uh, hook for lifting, they had some springs on there for a spring-loaded latch to help hold on to that well and even an uh, arm in the front for pressing the beacons. Looking good. In 12th place, we have team number 15, Try Hard Robotics from FTC 14417. Love the name, by the way. So this robot was designed by Wilson, Wilson, and Matthew. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, before I even start talking about the this robot, I'd like to talk about the renders alone. These are some of the best renders that I've ever seen. The first time they sent them in the Discord and I looked at them, I thought, oh my god, they actually built their robot. But then I take a closer look <laughs> and then I realize that they're renders. The, all of these renders just came out like beautiful. And I don't know how they were able to do it within five days, like CAD the entire robot and then make these renders. Um, the renders just look great. But uh, as far as the robot itself goes, um, everything else is built really, really clean. Um, one of the more crazy parts about the robot was their hanging mechanism. They said it was like some crazy, like <laughs> one billion to one ratio or something that it could lift like a million pounds or something along <laughs> those lines. Um, one of the problems we had with that was, uh, it would shred the gears and they kind of nodded to that in their, uh, in their press release, they talked about it wouldn't really ever work. It would shred the gears before it starts to hang. But I thought it was a really cool and interesting part of the robot. Yeah, I'm looking at these renders now. This is the first time that I've seen these renders. And that table, like, I would have thought that that entire robot was just straight on that table. And then the, the robot itself, like, yeah, the gears look super realistic. Awesome job, guys. Uh, Evan, why don't you add some feedback into that? Yeah, so I, I have a soft spot for orange and black robots being on 11.503 my previous year, and this looks incredible. I really, really like the Mechanum PTO system. It's definitely really unconventional, something I've never seen before, but I don't know how well that would work in competition. It maybe it's striving for something that's a little bit simpler, maybe just something direct-driven, but I really do like the fact that you were able to do this in five days. Super incredible. All right, thank you guys very much. We're now moving on to a team that actually has a combination of three people from different teams, one of them being an FRC team and two of them being FTC. So that's pretty cool to see. I'm just gonna stick with the team numbers. Uh, so we have in, I'm gonna assume 15th place on our script, we had 154th, but that's not possible. I wish we had 154 <laughs> teams that signed up. But in 15th place, we have team number 14, um, with which is team, members from teams uh, FRC 28, 77, uh, FTC 8581, FTC 7236. And clarification, it is 14th place, not 15th place. Go ahead and uh, let's let's show this one off. All right. This one is done by Nate, Dietz, and Jacob. So a bunch of people that I've talked to a lot. Um, man, this tech binder. I love the funky kind of 80s aesthetic. It looks really cool. Um, and the other really, really weird but very nice thing about this robot is their hang. So traditionally, you'd see robots, you know, kind of stay upright when they went to hang. 
Um, but this what I guess that wasn't their style. So they latch on, and it looks like their hanging mechanism actually pivots 90 degrees, which puts their drivetrain facing upward so their their partners can drive up onto their buddy climb system. It, it's a wild robot. Um, I did enjoy the pocketing, but it felt a little incomplete. Um, the renders were also pretty nice on this one. So, ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Evan, on uh, yeah. some additional feedback. Mm -hmm. I saw some of the Frisbee and intake mechanisms look really promising. It's kind of a shame that you guys didn't get to fully implement them, but they look really good. And then I really, really like that elevator gearbox. I think it was, uh, yeah, there it is. That looks, it looks so cool. All right. Thank you very much. So moving on to the last three of our bottom 14, we have in 24th position, team number 38 from FTC 16072. So with this one, it looks like they uh, decided to go with a kit style a base and with some nice uh, watercolor render there on the Lexan. And then as well as having a, also what looks to be a go build a lift kit on the hang, along with sort of a custom latch going on there with a bit of a spring latch on the front, it seems to help hold on to that bar extra tight. As well as having that, looks like they're, base plate there is extra thick to support the weight of another robot I think they mentioned so that they could potentially do a buddy climb. All right, looking good. In 23rd position, we had team number seven from FTC team 6547, Cobalt Colts. So this robot was designed by Alton, Noah, and Yassine. Um, this robot was really interesting. Um, there is a couple of parts missing to it, but one of the things that most stood out to all of us was um, how they allowed other robots to hang. So on the back of the robot, they actually have that big curved tube, and this is supposed to act as a ring so that other robots can hang on that ring once they've already gotten up, um, which was really interesting. There's no other robot that we judged that had a ring that went up with them. Other robots lifted, the, lifted up other robots. Um, but on this robot, there was some things missing, a couple of motors, um, some chain or gears to power their intake. But it was a really interesting design. It was just simple and effective and pretty creative. Sounds good. And our last but not least of that bottom 14, we have team uh, 25, who was in 16th place from FTC team 7105, Swift Robotics. All right. So this team helped Kate, Gina, Ben, and Rebecca. And... I was a big fan of a lot of the simplicity aspects of this robot. Didn't include a ton, but it all felt like it would work fairly well. I did like the four traction drive because their wheelbase was fairly, that wasn't very long, so it still should be able to turn pretty well. And a lot of it kind of embodied those principles of keep it simple, stupid. It would have been nice to see a few more things like maybe some electronics and a phone, but all in all, I was a big fan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live and independent.